Welcome back to Harriet's Florida Kitchen. I'm Harriet, this is my kitchen, and we're here in Florida on a very sultry summer day. Now, midsummer, what do your thoughts turn to? Christmas, of course, because what's in the stores now? The fruit is everywhere in the stores and it's everywhere in your garden, so it's time to make things, but to make things to can for Christmas. So what are we doing today? We're doing mango chutney because the mangoes are around and they're about five for a dollar, five, five for five dollars, which is a pretty good price. So I'm going to, we're gonna, I've got my recipe ready to go here on the side of the counter. And I, this one is not from one of my cookbooks. This is from Savour Magazine, which I find to be very, very reliable. So I've printed it and I've put it into my wonderful notebook that Joanne gave me for Christmas last year because she saw that all of my recipes were a wreck. They were sort of all over in boxes and things. So we're going to be, I've got, you're, I'm supposed to measure out, I've got to measure out the mangoes, but I have everything else prepped and ready as you can see over here in the show kitchen. It is ready to go. That took about was like wrestling a gorilla because I had to reach into the very tops of cabinets to find things like cinnamon sticks and, and um, raisins and stuff that's not necessarily immediately available. So we're going to start the peeling and the measuring. The, now it calls for, depends, if it calls for, say, if it calls for, let's say, five cups of mango, that means you measure after you've cut all the mango off, you've got all of the skin off, you've got obviously everything gone and you measure the exact meat of the mango. But if it calls for two and a half pounds, you have to start with the whole mango, and then the meat that's left is what you actually use to cook with. So we have a bowl of mangoes, and we're going to measure this. So the thing to do is you start it, the easiest thing to do is to put it on my, actually this is an old Weight Watcher scale, it's quite a wonderful scale, put it on ounces, and measure the bowl, zero the bowl out, okay? Okay, so we're gonna do this with, this is two pounds and 13, and that's really two and a half. That's gonna end up being about two and a half. So let's do, um, we're gonna do this amount of mangoes. I'm just not gonna waste them. All right, so that's fine. And I'll take this over here. And we're going to open the skin this just to loosen it up because I'm going to use a scraper. Now, this is going to be like this. Okay. And do that all the way around. You know what? This, this, you're supposed to do it with a scraper, but I think it's going to be easier with a knife. You know, there are mangoes and there are mangoes, and this mango is not as juicy as, say, a Pakistani mango, which you probably don't need me to tell you, is about the best kind of mango you can find. And there's even a great book called something like The Case of, Case of Exploding Mangoes, which I recommend. Okay, now I'm going to do this with all three of them. good mango, which is a huge relief. Okay, all of this goes into the bowl. Now, I used a little more mango than I meant to, as I told you I would, because so much of this is going into just the juice and not getting into the, not getting into the bowl, but it's not like the hot pepper jelly, which you really need to do exactly, or it won't gel properly. But in this case, this is chutney. It doesn't really have to gel. It just has to kind of thicken and taste good. And how bad is it to have extra chutney, to have extra mango? We're all prepped and ready, except for a few things. The first thing that's going to go in into the pan, of course, are going to be the mangoes. Then I have prepped the one cup of white sugar, and the one cup of brown sugar, and it is light brown sugar. And of course, because it is made with sugar and molasses, it's sticky, sort of like sand at the beach. So you have to mash it in really hard. Make sure you've got the right amount. Then we are gonna put in 
cup of apple cider vinegar. And it turned out I only had a half a cup of apple cider vinegar, so I added um, white wine vinegar, which I think will be just fine. Just a flavor, maybe slightly, but not probably very noticeably. And I'm putting in a cup of raisins. And these are the um, various spices. So we have, um, uh, oh, oh, I know, a half a cup of chopped, uh, chopped ginger. So this is in the food processor, ready to go. Which is, why isn't it doing it? Wait. Easily, easily chopped. And again, I just happen not to have ginger, but I did have crystallized ginger. You know I'm trying to go to the store as little as possible, so that'll be fun. All bad is I have it crystallized for some reasons. Okay. And I've also measured out. I haven't measured out. I've done, we, have, we need three tablespoons of fresh lemon juice, so I've already squeezed it. One, one, squeeze. one, two, three, okay, how much do I have left? Bliss, that's going to go in my iced tea right over here, okay, and next I'm going to do the Okay, I put in two teaspoons of chili powder, a teaspoon of the freshly grated nutmeg. I didn't freshly grate it. I do have the nutmegs, but I decided to go ahead and put freshly, I bought freshly ground at the store, not freshly ground, but you know, a fresh jar of it at the store. Decided not to go ahead and do that much of, that much grating. Um, a teaspoon of kosher salt, and a half a teaspoon of ground cloves, a half a teaspoon of ground black pepper. So those all go in. Next thought that we would do, go ahead and do on camera, Oops. stab your feet, on camera we're going to do, we've got to have two garlic cloves, so you probably know this, but you take, the, you take a, the flat side of a knife and you mash it against it and that helps get the peeling off, and then you, well in this case you put this into this clever little thing that looks like a baby buggy, which I've shown you before. I really love. Put both of those in there. This can go in the garbage. Off it goes. Okay. And you put this in here like this. And then you okay. And it's done. It looks good. All right. Now those in there. One large yellow onion. Do not use anything like a Vidalia onion because it will not be strong enough. In fact, this is so strong that I was in tears before I turned on the video. And finally, a stick of cinnamon. Looks like this. Okay, goes right in. Now, we are going to just stir that up. And Super fun to stir. Looks great. Okay, look, I'll show you how that looks. Bring that around so you can see how it looks in the pan. Oh, looks great. Let's see, I've got some large pieces of mango here too. Which is make it extra good. Put it on the stove and so this is a it calls for a four quart saucepan but i decided to use this may be a four quart saucepan who knows um and i'm gonna bring it to a boil and then i'm gonna reduce it to medium low cook it stirring occasionally for about two hours and then i'll be back and we'll take a look and we put it in the jars okay all right we now have it on a nice boil Turn it down to, what did it say? It said turn it down to medium low. So there we go. That is medium low. I'm going to put the lid on and I'm going to stir it every little while. Now, 
I'm now gonna work on the jars. Now I'm doing a little bit different thing than I did last time with the Tabasco jelly. I am um, putting the jars in the dishwasher. I know I said that you couldn't really time it, but in this case, since you're doing it for two hours. So I have a bunch of jars. I have both half pint jars. You can see that with the rest of the things in the dishwasher. Um, I have the half pint jars in there and I also have some pint jars because I wanna see kind of, kind of how much it makes this time around before I do it again to make sure I have enough Oh, Christmas presents isn't going to be quite enough for my list. But I am going, so I'm going to bring them out of the dishwasher. I'm going to pop them at the last minute, the last five minutes, I'm going to pop them in the oven. And that's how I'm going to, and so they're going to sterilize that way. But I'm putting the uh, pan lids on top of the stove the way I did last time because I want to make sure they're really boiled and I don't want to, I don't know, the rubber that goes into the oven kind of makes me uncomfortable. So I'll be back in two hours and we'll be ready to can, okay? I'm, now I'm gonna go have some iced tea, which is just about ready. I'll just show you how delicious this iced tea looks on a summer day with a little mint in it. It's just a little additional treat. Okay, that's it, that's it. Off we go for our iced tea. turned it down just a little bit down to low well a little bit above low but as you can see it's cooking down a lot so depressing you think you're gonna have about a million half pint jars but really not anyway it's getting nice and thick and it's got another oh I don't know 20 or 30 minutes all right we'll, ch we'll check it then okay it's time to take everything out so the chutney has been boiling on top of the stove the lids are boiling on top of the stove and the jars have gone through the dishwashing cycle. I quickly took them out and I've now put them into the oven at 200, a little over 200 degrees and they've been in there for 15 minutes. So I'm going to take those out. They should be super hot. 200 degrees hot. It's not like it's 500 degrees. Anyway, we'll take those out. see how this looks. Looking really nice and thick. Okay. I'm sorry, I should have set that up better. Anyway, look, not super thick, hasn't gelled, but it's definitely thicker and it has re reduced, which is what <laughs> always a good thing. We love reducing. We wish that our body would do it more. Okay. So now the thing I'm going to do is get out the this. I have a funnel. Okay, and I'm going to put these. So I'm put these closer to you. And I think I'll do it this way. Okay, so put these into the funnel, which is sterilized. Ooh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Okay. on here. This one goes on here. And I'll be back shortly once they've all sealed to tell you and then we'll taste it. Okay. Well, once again, I signed off a little soon. After I signed off, I had a little think. I thought, you know what? I don't want people to get botulism. 
just on the chance that I should have given that thing a water bath. When you do something really fast, like Tabasco jelly, lots of sugar, you don't have to worry about a water bath. I don't know why it's counterintuitive. If it cooks for less than 10 minutes, you're good. And Tabasco jelly, you do cook for less than 10 minutes or exactly 10 minutes. But if you cook for a couple of hours, as we did with the, um, with the chutney, you need a water bath. So I'm boiling it. I went and dug out my pan again, my pot. And you have to make sure that you, wait a minute, let me see how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna show you. So you have to make sure that your lids, I mean your, um, your pots, what am I trying to say, your jars, go in and have, so you, can, you can rest it on the side, a little, if you have a little wire rack, you can rest it on the side, and then you can put it in to test them, but you wanna make sure that they are, you have at least two inches above the jars, and then you bring it to a boil. So I am resting them on the top of this until it comes to a boil. And then I'll put them in for 10 minutes at a hard boil and make sure, and if, they, if it starts to go down, then I will add, I will add water, not boiling water to it to make sure that it stays two inches over the tops of the jars. So I'll boil it for 10 minutes and then take it out, let it cool, take them off, put them on a cloth, which as you can see, I have the cloth ready, and then and then they, all the little germs and everything, even though I put it in sterilized glasses, it's sterilized jars, even though I put sterilized lids on it, I just feel more comfortable if I do put it in the water bath. Now, if you do it and you don't have this wonderful jar, which I do believe I bought at Walmart some 50 years ago, um, then you can use a big pot, any old big pot. And you also don't have to have um, that rack. As you saw when I did the Tabasco jelly, I didn't use a rack. I just kind of put them into the pot and then I got them out. But I, it does, well actually, yeah, I just boiled the jars. Uh, it's probably a good thing to have something on the bottom. I don't know, I've done it without the lid. I've done it without the, the thing before. That just helps, it helps you be able to lift them out. So it won't hurt if they're just on the bottom, but you do have to have something to lift them out. So you can either use jar holder like this, or my tongs, which I, think, which I think are in the dishwasher. Okay, now I'm gonna take off the lid. Big excitement. Put in this rack. It's definitely a hard boil, as you can see from the steam in the background. And these are most definitely t two inches under the water. Okay, that's the, all the excitement for the moment. Now we put the lid back on. We do not burn our hands. Okay, now that's gonna be timed for 10 minutes and then I'll be back. Okay, it's been 10 minutes. Take the lid off. Stove. And lift out. Oh, you know what? I'm not sure it's going to be that easy to lift this out. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'll just lift out each jar because now that rack is hot. Okay. So come up here. And that I'm not going to sample because you saw me sample it yesterday before I decided I'd made a huge error. And so, now you know, put your chutney or anything you cook for longer than 10 minutes in a water bath, bath and you'll know that it's totally safe. Okay, what a relief. Not only did they seal, I could hear them clicking from the other room, going <coughs> very thrilling. I kept trying to kind of catch them on camera, but it wasn't possible, they were tricking me. Okay, so you can see that there are little dimples. Let's see if you can catch it in the light, yep. You can see those have gone in again. They're very, 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 very sturdily in. No clicking back and forth. So those are fine. So sad that we only have five of these. So I'm afraid I'm gonna have to make it another 10 or so mangoes to make some more. Now don't forget that you can have this, I told you, not only can you have this on pork sandwiches, on meatloaf sandwiches, 
you can also have this, well, Tabasco jelly was for the meatloaf, but this is great on meatloaf too, um, and also on curry. But don't forget, you can have this on a plowman sandwich. So you can have this with cheddar cheese uh, on that and on a, on a great piece of granary bread. It'll oh, be really delicious. Now I'm just gonna taste this one. Let's see. My goodness, it's really good. And this is gonna stay in our refrigerator, so that's okay. I can have another one right out of the jar. Philip will never notice. Mm. It's delicious. That is gonna be so good on lamb curry. It's gonna be so good on sandwiches. That's gonna be so good on leg of lamb. And it's going to be so welcome by my friends for Christmas. Now, this is the time of year to do the actual to do the actual fruit and to do the actual jellies and jams. But Christmas time, I'll do another special and show you about wrapping them and how to give them and make them look beautiful as gifts. For now, I'm just gonna have another little bite of chutney. Mm, 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 mm. This is delicious. Thank you so much for watching another Harriet's Florida Kitchen.